Hi guys! What's up and welcome back to my channel. Before I start today, I do just want to apologise for like how I'm looking and probably sounding. I'm not feeling the best today, which is why I'm not even in my usual setup. I just didn't want to bother with that. So like today you join me on my bed, in my pyjamas, kind of more of a casual video today. So yeah, please excuse the lack of professionalism in the wake of me feeling kind of like crap. That's why I haven't been putting out so many videos recently, but I'm hoping that I'm gonna get back to like my normal sort of schedule fairly soon, so just bear with me. So in today's video, I am going to be giving my non-spoilery review of The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. The Merciful Crow is a YA fantasy set in a world where the populace is divided into a hierarchy of castes named after various birds, where each caste has like a magical birthright or skill. And in case you wanted to pause the video and have a look at them, you can just pause this if you want to read through it. So like the royal family is the phoenix cast and they have power over fire and then you have like upper classes like swan and dove and peacock there are hunting classes, lower classes and then right at the very bottom below everything else are the crows and the crows have no birthright. The crows are like not even considered like part of the other main caste system and because they have no birthright this means that they have no unique like magical powers or innate skill. And as you can probably guess, our main character is in fact a crow. Our main character is Fi and she is currently in training to become a crow chief, which means that she will one day have her own band of crows. Crows are essentially so like reviled and looked down upon by all the other casts that they essentially have like no real home of their own, they're not really welcome anywhere, they're kind of everyone kind of hates the crows. So the crows tend to live a nomadic lifestyle on the road and in this world there is a disease called the sinner's plague and essentially it's like a hundred percent death sentence if you catch it. Um, if the infected dead are like not dealt with then it has the potential to wipe out like entire villages, possibly entire cities where like nothing will ever grow or flourish there again just because of the devastation that this disease leaves in its wake. And so while the crows don't have a unique power or birthright, they are actually immune to this disease and so it ends up falling to the crows a lot in life that they have to go around sort of in like the plague doctor uniform like with their crow cloaks and like their beaked masks and essentially what the crows do is they deal with the dead across the kingdom of Sabor. This is another reason why people hate them, because they end up essentially travelling around and dealing with the infected dead, taking the bodies away to be burned while never actually falling victim to the disease themselves. On the other side of things though, being a crow is really not a very pleasant life at all. Um, essentially, aside from having to travel around and never ever having like a home or a place to settle down, always having to deal with the dead, they're treated horribly by basically every non-crow that they come across. And there's a group of people who call themselves the Olanders, who essentially just ride around and murder crows just because they can. They are literally, essentially just a fictional KKK, like right down to the white hoods that they use to hide their identity. So the crows really kind of have it rough. So Fi is training to one day take over the task of leading her fellow crows around attending to the various plague victims. The reason that she's being trained is because Fi is what's known as a witch. So every cast does also have what's known as witches, which means that they have a particularly masterful control of their birthright. So for example, cranes have the birthright of truth, which means that they can tell when somebody is lying to them, but a crane witch has the ability to essentially extract the truth out of somebody or force them to tell the truth rather than just detect what's a lie and what is not. And despite not having a birthright, the crows do still have witches among their number. So because they don't have any power of their own, crow witches are able to wield the various powers of any of the other birthrights provided that they have like a conduit through which to wield that power. In this case, that means they need access to the bones of an individual from one of those castes. And it turns out that the most practical piece of a person to carry around and use is their teeth. So crow witches wear a string of human teeth around their neck, which each tooth lets them wield the power of the person that, that tooth once belonged to. Which is metal as fuck. 
So the basic plot begins when Fi and her band of crows are picking up two dead plague victim bodies from like the upper class regions of the capital. But once outside the city's walls, it's revealed that Fi's chief made a deal with these two people who are not actually dead at all. They are in fact the crown prince and his bodyguard. And they are faking their own deaths in order to be able to flee the city because they believe that the new queen is trying to assassinate the prince. And now they need the crow's help to see them safely to their allies before it's realised that they're not actually dead. So this book has a pretty linear premise, you know, get this person from point A to point B. It's sort of like your standard escort plot. Except that at its heart, this book is a commentary on social privilege, the dangers of apathy, mob mentality and commitment to a cause. Over the course of this book, you get to see very different characters from very different walks of life, all having to like be put together and work together and coming to terms with their prejudice and either working to understand it or accept it or change it. And there's a very realistic variation in the time it takes to get to that point or to start to consider things or make those changes whether they make any changes at all or what events lead to triggering that doubt that hmm despite the caste system maybe we're all just people stuck in the same situation the book has a fairly small cast of characters at least just counting like the main characters i have already mentioned fi who is the crow chief in training and who becomes personally responsible for the prince and his hawk bodyguard fi is a bit rough around the edges but then that's to be expected considering that she's been raised on the road she's been dealing with dead bodies her entire life she's like a very self-assured and take no shit kind of person but I think that the source of her strength comes in like this deep-rooted desire to protect the people that she cares about and protect what she has. Fai is well aware of all of the injustice that her people face, even in like the really tiny and intricate ways that that hatred and that prejudice has ingrained itself into the culture of the higher classes. And she does not hesitate to call that shit out at any given time. If the phrase, check your privilege, had existed in Fai's world, then I'm pretty sure she would have been shouting it at the two noble-born boys like every five seconds. I feel like her character was definitely very layered because her need to succeed in keeping her fellow crows safe is also laced with all this self-doubt about whether she is capable and whether she wants the life that is ahead of her. She's angry but also tired. She has this iron will pointing outward but on the inside there's a lot of uncertainty within. And she's having to deal with a huge conflict of interest between her instinct to protect her people and doing her duty to honour a promise that puts those very same people at risk. I feel like Fi is a character that a lot of people could really resonate with and like at no point did she feel tropey or flat or two-dimensional. She had a very well-defined personality and I feel like over the course of this book you do get to see a lot of growth in her, both in her skills and in her personality. The next of what I think are the three main characters is the Crown Prince Jasimir. I feel like out of the main three, Jas is my least favourite because being a pampered prince all his life, he is in fact a petulant child. Out of everyone we get to see that he has the most privilege being of the Phoenix cast and a member of the royal family and so like he and Fi could like not be further apart in terms of their upbringing or their view of the world and the way that it works. At heart, Jas is a really nice boy. He does have good intentions, but I think this book does a good job of showing the difference between good intentions, direct actions, and realistic expectations. His personality tends to clash the most with the others around him just because he is a product of his origin. So like a lot of like the interpersonal type drama of this book revolves around the fact that like he doesn't really get how the world works outside of a gilded palace. Last is the prince's bodyguard, Tavin, who is a member of the Hawk cast and therefore also comes from a position of privilege within like the cast hierarchy. However, he is slightly more attuned to the reality of things and often ends up acting as a mediator between Fi and Jas. Of the three, Tav seems to be like the most willing to like reconsider his point of view and see things from like the point of view of the other person. That said, when it comes to his duty towards the prince, he is essentially just as iron-willed as Fi is in regards to protecting her fellow crows. And he's not above doing whatever it is he has to to ensure that the prince gets safely to the allies that he has waiting for him. This book does feature a hate-to-love romance and I think that for like a 
fairly short YA book. It does the trope a fair bit of justice. It's not insta love by any means, and while you can see the relationship developing, it's very much an uphill struggle, you know? Like, there are clear obstacles and personal issues that have to be overcome before either of the love interests can enter into, like, an actual romantic relationship. And while I would say it's sort of mild on the angst, if you do enjoy a hard for well won hate to love romance, I would say this book definitely has something for you. Especially for a YA novel, I was impressed by like how not childish and not cliche it felt. And as someone who isn't personally that invested in romance anyway, I really appreciated that the romance plot never took over or really deviated the path of the story. The book does also have representation for gay and bisexual characters. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think there is also an agender character in this, although they're very much a background character. I could be wrong, but I felt like one of the crows in particular was only ever referred to with they, them pronouns. So overall, I rated this book a 3 out of 5 stars. I thought that for a YA fantasy, it had some pretty solid world building, particularly in how the effects of the class system permeate quite deeply into like all aspects of society. Whether characters actually realise it or not, they are like ever present. I thought that the magic system was fairly unique and interesting, this sort of dual aspect of people who are born with certain powers, and then a further group with limited members using all or any of those powers via like magical consumables. I also really liked that for a YA, and despite being a fantasy, the biggest theme in this book seems to be societal privilege. How the vast majority of people are willing to turn a blind eye to the plight of others, even if on a moral level they disagree with the injustice, they're unwilling to do anything to change just because it doesn't directly affect them. When I compare this book and the way it portrays like deep-rooted hatred and prejudice compared to something like Wicked Saints, which was all show and no tell and even less payoff, this really stands out as being the far better crafted and far better executed example of having like that bitter underdog character challenging the status quo. For all that praise, just the reasons that I didn't rate this book higher is because all my ratings are like personal to me, and generally as someone who reads mostly adult fantasy, I just tend to want more from a book than this was able to give being a YA. I'm well aware that that's my own personal taste in books and, and I do think that this is a pretty solid YA fantasy and I am interested to see where the series goes. I just don't think that I'm like the ideal audience for this book. So for me personally, in order to rate it like a 4 or a 5 stars, it would have to resonate with me more in some way and it just didn't. But I think that this book definitely has the potential to be a lot of people's new favourites and given that it's a new release and I saw a lot of buzz about it, I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen many more people talking about it on booktube. I especially don't tend to expect much in the way of like social commentary when I read a YA novel and I usually tend to expect things like the romance to be pretty insta-lovey or pretty cringy, but it seemed to avoid many of the tropes. Like, I can't nitpick it at all for being cliche or cringy at any point. I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but I'm also saying that I think it's a little bit like higher quality than a lot of the other YA that I've been reading recently. So with that said, I think I'm going to end my review here. I don't really want to get into like spoiler territory with this book, which is a possibility. So, and if anyone does want to talk more about this book, you can always DM me on like Instagram or Twitter and we can have like a nice chat about this in some more detail. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you're planning to read this book or if you've read it, what sort of rating you gave it. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!